Behind me is La Sagrada Familia, which is probably the most famous basilica in Spain. And this is literally a work of art designed by architect Antoni Gaudi with construction beginning in 1882. We're gonna check it out now. It also holds the crypt of the famous architect Gaudi himself. All right, so to buy tickets for the church, you come across the street and look both ways, as we learned growing up, and then you get your tickets at this machine that has a little eye on it. So coming to Sagrada Familia is a little bit like going to the airport. It's super intense security. You buy your tickets outside at an electronic ticket booth machine. I'm sure they have a regular ticket office. I didn't find it, but I will tell you it's muy caro. It is a very expensive, 26 euros a ticket. And then you get your app with your little QR code on it. You have to go through security. So don't bring any like um, things you wouldn't bring to the airport. And here we go. Wow. This is simply breathtaking. So, the architecture here at Sagrada Familia is a combination of Gothic Revival, Modernist, and Art Nouveau. It's really, 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 um, gosh, unusual. It's got that creepy, romantic, dark vibe to it. Pretty much like a lot in Barcelona, actually. It's, it's very dramatic. All right, I'm gonna head in, but I'm probably not going to do too much talking out of respect for where I'm at. So I'll take you on a tour, show you what La Sagrada Familia looks like. And remember guys, if you're enjoying my little tour here of Barcelona, please remember to subscribe, take a moment. It means a lot. Each and every subscriber counts and I really, really do appreciate it. Also take a moment to hit that like, comment, and uh, share because um, Gosh, you know what? It really does make a difference in the in 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 the channel and, and how well we do. So, I do appreciate that, guys. So, thank you. Okay, let's step into La Sagrada Familia. of Gothic Revival, Art Nouveau, and Modernism. And the best way for me to describe how this feels is almost like a very Tim Burton, Nightmare Before Christmas uh, look and feel and concept. Um, yet there's so much light and positivity here in this basilica that it is, it's peaceful, it's inviting, it's inclusive, and after all of us dealing with such a horrible, horrible pandemic for such a while, it's uh, also a sense of hope that better days lie ahead. We are now on our way to Parkwell. Is that how you say it, Parkwell? Parkwell. Parkwell, which is a, another one of Anthony Gaudi's architectural masterpieces. So. We're gonna check this place out, see what it's all about, and take you on a first-hand tour. Oh my gosh. Well, we just entered Park Guy L, 
which is um, in the Carmel Hill neighborhood of Barcelona. And first tip is you're not allowed to bring any fancy camera here. So if you have a GoPro or you have your phone, you're cool. If you have anything that looks high tech but is not as high resolution, <laughs> they won't let you do it without an authorization form. So just bear in mind. Um, they say it's not about the dinero, but I think it is. Anyway, we're gonna check this place out using my GoPro in 4K. All right, so back to the park. Park Goya is, um, Goyal Park, how do they say it? Goyal? Gue. Okay, so Park Gue is a park. It was originally established uh, back in the early 1800s as um, a housing development. And it was meant to ultimately become an epicenter of advanced technology and uh, urban living. And it was inspired by the English gardens uh, concept. Uh, but later when um, influenced by Antoni Gaudi, it took on many different elements and inspirations from his architectural mind and genius, one of which is naturalism. So much of this is literally a park within a park. So that's quite, uh, quite an interesting concept. So we're gonna check this place out. It has a stunning view of the city, which you will see here momentarily. So this is a beautiful park, and like most, they take advantage of its stunning design and its expansive shape. And you can see behind me, they have set up for some sort of a show or concert. So it's also an entertainment venue, and it's certainly a great place to watch a concert, and I'm sure amazing acoustics with all the sound bouncing off the walls behind the theater section there. But if for no other reason you come to Park Goy, Goy, I gotta work on my Catalan. If for no other reason you come to Park Goy, it is for that view of Barcelona behind me. You have a complete view of the city, the coastline, the Barceloneta, the skyscrapers, the uh, everything that is beautiful about this city, you've got right in front of your eyes. We are definitely, uh, it seems like on top of the world here, and it's a beautiful view of the city and definitely worth the truck up. So this is really a beautiful park. In contrast to some of the other parks I visited, like in Paris, like Luxembourg Gardens, this is very, very different. Luxembourg Gardens is very, um, um, <clears throat> if you will, manicured and uh, ornamental. Uh, this is very wild, very much like much of Antony Gaudi's works. Uh, very wild, very dreamy, very imaginative, very whimsical, very playful, uh, bizarre if you will, dare I say mad. It's a little combination of everything. So um, quite a special, um, quite a special place to experience. And we are heading down to the bottom now. So you get your tickets up at the top for 10 euros. <clears throat> you walk in, you don't bring your professional camera. You head down to the overlook, which gives you this incredible view of the city. And then you make your way down a multitude of paths and stairways through this crazy, beautiful, if you will, botanical garden and end up uh, here at the very bottom of the park and at the top of Carmel Hill. And you will get a picture perfect money shot of Park Gui. Okay. Whenever I've looked at these buildings, they seem to remind me very much of like a Hansel and Gretel, uh, if you will, the candy house that the witch lived in. That's what I think of when I come here. And I think uh, that's very um, in line with what this feels like, very fairy tale, very dreamy, 
uh, but with a touch of darkness. Um, that's how I would describe Gaudi, and it's really uh, quite an elaborate garden work of art. If you're looking for the place to stay in Barcelona, well then the Gothic Quarter is exactly the place to be because you're literally in the heart of everything and Grand Hotel Barcino is a hotel I would recommend staying at. It's not going to break the bank. It's around 100 euros or so a night after tax and it's really convenient. The rooms are nice. You're right here outside literally of Plaza Real and La Ramba. So you are in the middle of everything. It's a great place to stay. One of my favorite parts about the room that we're staying at here at Grand Hotel Barcino is the balcony. So when you get your room, make sure you ask for one. And this is the typical Catalan balcony. That even comes with bells at noon. <laughs> Talk about perfect timing, and it was not planned. It's amazing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful city. Um, there is character and charm at every turn, and I'm really, really loving Barcelona. Our friends at Quimet Quimet recommended La Plata for an incredible tapas experience and vermouth. This is house-made vermouth here at La Plata in Barcelona, and it is absolutely delicious. It's sweet, it's smooth. You know, one of the things that you wouldn't think about is actually just enjoying vermouth on its own. I certainly know I don't. You know, usually it goes into a martini or another type of cocktail, but here you actually enjoy in Barcelona the vermouth on its own. And that's really interesting. Sometimes you'll find uh, that um, you'll have a lemon slice in it, and sometimes you'll just have it as I am now, plain. It's house-made, it's delicious, and it's the perfect start to my tapas experience tonight at La Plata. When you come to La Plata, one of the things that you will experience is a delicious smorgasbord of tapas. However, only a few. You don't have much of a choice. There are several tapas to uh, enjoy, and that's it. So you will have what is fresh for the day. Today, we have fried anchovies. We have beautiful, regular, just filet anchovies with olives in oil, a salad of olives and tomatoes and onion, and then of course the tomato bread, which is a staple here in Barcelona, and it looks fabulous, and it's the perfect way to end our time in Barcelona. If you've never had a fried anchovy, or an anchovy for that matter, or if you don't like them, I challenge you to enjoy them here at La Plata because, look, it's just delicious. It's that simple. The head, the tail, the whole shebang, you do it all. It's fabulous. It's fried. It's a light and crispy. Don't worry about the bones. You crunch them right up. They're that brittle. And it's really, really, really something that I think is both unique and delicious to eat. You have to try it here at La Plata. Another, um, another tapas that you um, have here is the regular anchovy with a beautiful little, almost like a niçoise olive, if you will. And then the tomato bread. Now let me tell you what, I'm a sucker for the tomato bread here in Barcelona. But what I would do here is I would actually combine the two. So I'm gonna take this beautiful anchovy filet, and rather than eating it by itself, I'm going to put it right here on the tomato bread. Because what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me the punch of the salt, I got the sweet of the tomato, I got the crispy, soft, airy bread, and it's gonna be the perfect tapas to go with my vermouth. There has to be something in the water here because these anchovies in Barcelona are so delicious. They're fatty. They're huge. Honestly, the anchovies here in Barcelona are like almost two to three times the size of an anchovy 
that you'd be familiar with back home. This is the real deal. This isn't the little farm-raised manufactured ones that we get back home. Outstanding. Now you know, if there's one thing about me, I'm a sucker for sausage. And this sausage looks out of this world delicious. I can tell you right now, my finger's touching it. It's piping hot. It's gorgeous. It's served on the schmear of the tomato bread. And while I would love to eat the sausage by itself, as I know from my family, you always enjoy your meat with bread. So, here we go. Salute. Oh! Mm. Ah! Mmm! Mmm! Simple, beautiful, delicious pork sausage, simply seasoned with pepper and herbs, cooked to perfection, melts in your mouth, <laughs> it's really good. If you're looking for some of the best nightlife in Barcelona, well look no further than Plaza Real, which is the epicenter of everything exciting and vibrant and delicious here in the heart of the Gothic Quarter. Tonight, I'm gonna to check out one of the many cafes that you'll find here, bars and entertainment. You'll find everything here, even flamenco. For me, I'm looking for a nightcap and maybe some postres. All right, so tonight my poison is one of my favorite cocktails to have in Europe when I take the night on, and that is a porn star martini. It's actually not a martini, but it's a beautiful combination of lime juice, passion fruit juice, and vanilla infused vodka, and it's traditionally served with a shot of Prosecco that you do not shoot, but you sip, and what it does is it brings it all together. It's delicious. So Barcelona, You've been a very pleasant surprise. Salute to you. <laughs> Why is this concoction the way it is? It works. The passion fruit juice and this cocktail are truly perfect. Sometimes you can go out and get a porn star martini and it's just, it's too harsh. The passion fruit juice is too hard, the lime juice is too hard. This is perfectly smooth, creamy, like a lot of the things we're tasting in Barcelona. And the Prosecco rounds the edges. Fabulous. And if you really want to take this up a notch, Take your Prosecco, give it a nice floater, and you cut out a step. Cheers. <laughs>